All right, let's get started. Thank you for attending this uh, webinar from Everflow. Today's uh, topic is going to be about our API. This is a basic introduction that uh, will essentially allow you to understand how uh, to use our API and um, do some basic calls, like uh, finding the data that you need from our API. Um, for this webinar, I have on my, on my side, um, um, Hugo, who's joining us from our tech team. Uh, so for any advanced tech questions, uh, he'll be able to step in and uh, help you out. Um, as usual, the normal parts will be done by me. Um, I'm based, of course, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, I think by now you've uh, used to my uh, webinar. So great that you guys are joining again for another week. All right, let's get started. Um, the first part we want to talk about uh, really is to give you a basic introduction, um, talk a little bit about Postman, uh, some basic definitions that we have, and then how to run uh, a get call and how to run a post call uh, in Everflow. And then we'll talk about some advanced uh, questions that you have and frequently asked questions in our, um, in our chat system that we see for APIs. Okay, let's get started. So introduction, right? Um, in general, the way our um, Everflow API is structured, it's uh, structured to be very open in the sense that um, our Everflow account or the Everflow account that you as a client or as an advertiser or as a partner are using, those accounts are also built essentially to use our Everflow API in the, in the background. So this is a really advanced way of uh, setting our uh, API structure up to make it open and accessible to not just uh, the UI users, but also to the users who want to exclusively use our API. So essentially, uh, to summarize, you can do everything that you can do on the Everflow account. You can also achieve uh, the Everflow API, pretty much. So that's pretty cool. Um, in terms of um, how you would actually go about it, before we go more into depth, um, we should talk a little bit about how you can actually call our API. So one of the most popular tools uh, to use uh, to make API calls is really the Postman. So you might think it's something like this, but actually it's a, it's a much more advanced tool. It's actually a third party system that allows you to run advanced um, calls. Essentially it's like a very, very high end uh, browser that helps you run these calls and um, access the data in your system, right? It's a free tool, you can download it and you can um, essentially um, install the app that allows you to run this, um, these calls to our system. And um, they have also quite good tutorials at their end. So if you uh, want to download and learn how to use their system, I highly recommend their learning center and also their webinars are pretty cool to watch as well. All right. So assuming that you have Postman or you have another software or system similar to a Postman that you would like to use to actually um, uh, call our API, um, the, the, there are some other things you need to remember before you can start running uh, these calls, right? So the, the way our API structure is, um, uh, is built, we have these general API calls. And this is under the metadata section. These are endpoints that are listed that are open that you can call and you can actually um, take down essential data that you need in order to run effective API calls. So for example, if you wanna know what kind of um, uh, data that needs to be sent for time zones, what kind of data that needs to be sent um, for uh, when you put in a country request or something like that, then you can use these endpoints to actually first take the data out and use the data from here to run the actual API call to our system. So these don't require any authentication, um, meaning that if you just um, take this and put it in the Postman, you can get the data automatically at your end without needing to run additional authentication from our side. Um, the other kind of um, API that we have is really the one that is needing an authentication, which means you need an account with Everflow essentially to be able to um, run these API calls, right? And um, there are three kinds of accounts that we have in Everflow. We have the advertiser, uh, we have the client, and then we have the partner account. And essentially these are structured um, in the UI in these three sections. And similarly also for um, the, the API at the back end, there's also the same structure. So. If you are an advertiser, then you have to use uh, the advertiser API key and 
um, actually access the advertiser API endpoint. Um, so essentially that's how the structure would look like. The, the URL would look different for the advertiser endpoints and they would have this advertiser in the name that differentiates it essentially. If you are a, a, a client that is a regular Everflow client, then you use the network API and then the structure of the, the endpoints that you use will also have this word network in that structure essentially. And if you're a partner similar to an advertiser, you have a partner account at Everflow, and then you also get um, a partner API key uh, or an affiliate API key essentially, and then you use uh, the structure which has the word affiliate in it. That's how you can easily differentiate which endpoint you're using. And based on what kind of um, account you have, what kind of access you have to Everflow, um, you are able to uh, run these calls uh, with the corresponding endpoints. Okay. Um, also, if you guys have any questions during this webinar, feel free to drop them uh, in, the, in the question and answer section, and we'll get to them towards the end of the webinar, all right? Great. Moving on, uh, in terms of authentication, we, um, we also need uh, you to have an authenticated API key in order to actually access those endpoints, right? So before you can actually call those endpoints and run those calls, um, you need to first get this API key uh, created for you. So if you are an advertiser or an affiliate in the sense that you have, um, you're working with an Everflow client and you're looking to run API calls, then you need to reach out to your, um, your account manager or your contact at the, at the client company side who can generate an API key for you and send it to you. So essentially the way that you would generate an API key for an advertiser or for a partner is uh, simply to go to either the advertiser or to the partners, click on the manage section, click on the name of the advertiser or, or the partner, click on API and then create a key. And once you get the key created, you can send it to the person who was going to be running those API calls and then they will use that key to access the API. If you are a client and you just want to use the API for yourself, um, you can just navigate to Control Center My Account. And in the general section, there is an API key that is displayed to you towards the right side of your UI. And that key is unique to you and to your account. And essentially, um, it's, uh, it's like the password, essentially, that will help you authenticate uh, the, the calls that are made to make sure that it's only coming from a valid uh, API key from your account. Okay, once the authentication is done, the, the request will look something like this. You would um, place in Postman this URL that you want to use, what do you want to call, uh, and then in the headers, you would actually place the actual um, API key that you generated, right? So the key goes in here in the value section, and then this in this key section here, you um, have this um, uh, key that you can place. This is a general one that is applicable for everybody. The API key, of course, uh, changes uh, per um, like per account essentially that is being used. Once you do this, you can just hit send and automatically you get a response with the data that is requested if it is indeed a valid API key. Um, to talk a little bit more about what kind of calls you're running. So you have the get call, which you saw in the previous slide. So what does that really mean, right? So there's really like two broad sort of popular calls that are made in general. One is the get call and the other is the post call. So to talk a little bit about what a get call is, um, essentially, let's say you're a user and you go to Postman or to any application that allows you to make a get call, like a browser, for example, you can place in um, this call and select get, and then you put in the URL that um, that is like built to handle a GET request, right? So this request comes to Everflow and then we recognize what's in the URL and then based on the values there, we send the data back. So let's say this is a request to get an affiliate information. So uh, we recognize that the, the, this is the request and there's the ID that you pass here. So based on the ID that is passed, we collect the information of that affiliate, we build the response and send it back to the requesting um, uh, terminal essentially. And all of the information that we have on this affiliate is being sent back. So this is what is um, uh, what is a normal workflow, right? You request information, you get response as an information. So there is no change happening. It's just a request to actually get information without changing any of the data. Um, on the other hand, we have something called the post call. 
Now, when a post call is made, um, it's the same structure from Postman, you're submitting a post call to um, Everflow. The URL structure also remains the same, but additionally, you pass something called a payload. So the payload is really uh, and the value that is added into your request before you submit it to Everflow. So essentially the, the reason or the, the powerful part about this is that if you wanna make changes, then you can pass information in the payload using the payload to make changes uh, to your Everflow account. So this is like an edit um, access. Of course, in this example, it's not this uh, one that I show here is not really for making an edit. It's just to request information using these uh, filters. But you could in the future, you can also uh, run post calls and um, use the payload to make changes to your data. So that's why it's um, quite powerful. It's also a pretty advanced topic. So we're going to cover it in our advanced session. So this session, what you just need to know is that a post call allows you to create changes in your Everflow account. And uh, this is something we will cover in our more advanced session uh, in the next coming weeks. Okay, um, moving on. Apart from the get and the post call, we also have some general definitions uh, that's um, interesting to keep in mind. Um, one of it is uh, rate limiting. This is uh, sometimes asked and uh, just to explain how it works, generally it, it's what we say as how often you can call the API, right? Like how many calls you're making per second, how many calls you're making over a, over a 30 second period, uh, like things like that. So generally this is pretty broad. As a beginner, you would not run into the, an issue where rate limiting would affect you. So just know that if you see or hear about it, that it's, uh, it's uh, this is what it's about. And also it's something that is more for advanced users to worry about. And in general, Everflow has a pretty broad or pretty high uh, rate limiting that allows you to do quite a bit of um, uh, calls and it's quite flexible. Um, another topic that um, comes up more often is uh, paging. So sometimes um, Everflow returns data. So when a request is made, we can return the data with a certain paging object. And this refers to um, how many um, like rows are there essentially in the body and then um, how we format that data essentially when we're returning that data. So if there is a paging object, it's clearly defined in the documents and you can always see um, how you request uh, the, how the request is made and what data is coming back to you if the paging object is included or not. Uh, it looks something like this. It's included towards the end of the response. And essentially, if you want to request um, multiple pages, you can just um, iterate through the different pages and then essentially get the, get like make multiple calls and get the data back for each of those page responses. You can also increase the page size. So you can also say, okay, I want to request it with a higher page size and then you'll be able to uh, sort of get more data in one request. Yeah, um, that's about paging. Another interesting thing to look at is um, relationships and filters. So relationships are essentially additional information that is possible to request on a returned response. So when we send the response back, the data can contain additional information. And if you request that additional information to us, we can send that data back to you. Um, and for example, uh, this is one where you're requesting affiliates information. Normally when you run this call, you just get the data of the, of the affiliates back, but affiliates also have um, billing information stored in Everflow. So if you would like to have like specific billing information returned, you can add a relationship in the query string like this. And then essentially this billing relationship data will be passed back in the response for each affiliate that you are requesting info, info on. So that's pretty interesting, especially if you want to like do um, specific um, um, like um, like relationship based um, actions, then you can scroll through the documentation and every endpoint really documents what relationships exist and how you can get that back along with an example, um, our documents also have that. Uh, another thing that is interesting to explore is the filters. You can also choose to um, return um, like the endpoints with a specific filter. So for example, here, if you wanted to return affiliates with um, all which are only active, then you can also have a filter for account status, and then you can have that just be set to active 
in this case. And then only those affiliates that fit this particular criteria will be returned. So that's another way that you can um, manipulate the query string to return data to your um, specific um, requests. Okay, uh, moving on to the last part, which is frequently asked questions. So some of the things that we normally see when um, we have uh, questions coming through in the chats uh, saying that the API doesn't work or the calls are not working are uh, the affiliate or the advertiser API key is being used instead of the client API key or vice versa, right? So you are using the wrong kind of key, API key to access the data. That's one of the most common mistakes that we see that comes through the chats. Um, the other one uh, that we see quite often is using the wrong endpoint as well. So you're, use, you're trying to get the data, but you're trying to use an affiliate endpoint or a network endpoint to pull this data. So that's um, something to check as well to make sure that the endpoints that you're calling actually belong to the account hierarchy that uh, you should be calling in any case. Um, yeah, and then some other things that we see more often are, um, are you using an API key that is active? It could be someone has deactivated it by mistake, so it's always good to check the status of the API key. And also if you're going to use a post or a get to make sure that you're using the right method of, uh, of calls. And the last one, if you're using a post call that normally the payload that you submit has some sort of error. And this can happen if you are um, formatting like the, the query string uh, uh, parameters, but also in the payload itself. Um, if you don't have the right, for example, time zone ID or the right currency pass and things like that, if there are formatting errors in those payloads, then also there will be an error on your um, API calls that you're making. All right, um, some common error codes are listed here. And you can always see in the response if uh, the actual, um, um, what is the actual error, like in case, there's a formatting issue. If it's not authorized, then there's a different error code. So you can always see based on the response code that you uh, get as well, what the exact issue could be. And of course, if you do run into a situation where you are um, not able to figure out why you're getting the bad response, feel free to drop by our um, chat support or drop us an email at support.everflow.io and you'll be able to get more information from us. And yeah, I think that was the end of uh, our presentation for this week. We are going to be doing a more advanced session where we are going to be doing hands-on training and we're going to also um, do uh, some examples where you can submit and make changes and things like that with the, using the API. And uh, yeah, please subscribe to that one as well. And we'll make sure that you, um, if, you have, if you have any specific topics you would like us to cover in those advanced sessions as well, please submit those and we'll make sure we'll set up some examples for you to play around with in that session. All right, I'm gonna open it up for questions now. If you have any, please submit them and we can go through them together. All right, looks like there are no questions. Oh, that's always interesting. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing it means everyone is uh, super familiar with the API now. All right. Thanks a lot for attending this week's session. Um, we hope to see you again uh, in the next one. Have a good week. Take care.